Hi there! Do you want to learn Power Automate and simplify your workflows? In this video, I will share one of the lessons from my Power Automate module on my Udemy course. If you want to access the course, check the pinned comment below or become a channel member to unlock all the lessons. Let's get started. Now that our flow is ready, we can improve the way we trace dates in here. Because in my situation, it will work since I'm just three hours behind UTC and I plan to run the flow at 7 p.m. But if you are, for example, in Los Angeles, in the United States, and you want to do the same thing, you may have an error. So let's understand better how to treat dates and time zones inside Power Automate. And I'm going to show you now why the current configuration could be a problem. In order to get the items from the SharePoint list, we are getting based on the start of the day that we computed in this compose. And we are using UTC now to do that. So let's see this scenario. Let's imagine that today is August 14th and it's 7 p.m. in Los Angeles and our flow is programmed to run. What's going to happen is that UTC now in Los Angeles at 7 p.m. will return the next day because Los Angeles is several hours behind the UTC time. And then when we run start of the day, we are going to get as the response August 15th. So it means we are trying to get the tasks from the next day and that will not work. We are always going to receive an empty array because in the next day nothing was created since we are not there yet. So we need to find a way to treat this. So here is what we need to do. We are going to get the UTC now and it will return the next day. If you are in Los Angeles, of course. Here on my time zone, that won't happen, but the formulas apply in the same way. And then what's going to happen is that we need to convert to our current time zone to get our current time. The flow doesn't know what's the current time when it's running. And then from this date, we can extract the start of the day. And that will give us the correct time for the start of our day. And then we can use this in the query. But there is one point of attention regarding the time zone setting in the SharePoint configurations. Let's first get to this point and then we will see what's that. So let's go back and start adapting our flow. Instead of just getting the start of the day from UTC now, let's first convert UTC now to our time zone. And in order to do that, we have a connector that does it. And we can search by convert time zone. That's under the date time connector. If I click on see more, I can see all the functions that we have in here. And here it is, convert time zone. So let's click. And now what's the time that we want to convert? Let's use the UTC now function here, UTC now. And click on add. Notice that this can be also used as a function inside a compose. We already have date and time functions that do this conversion. But here is easier to select because of the interface. So here is UTC. The source time zone is correct. And I want to convert to my time zone. That in my case is Brasilia. Here let's choose this format with the O in the end. It will be in the correct format with the date first, the T and the hours. And I'm going to add a terminate after it, just to avoid getting the items and sending in the email. It will be cancelled. Okay, let's see what's the output of this action. I'm just going to test really quickly and we are going to see it. Okay, I just run the test. Let's see the output. We can see the inputs. So I passed the current time. My time now is 4.33. Since I use UTC now, I have three hours more. And then the output is 4.33 p.m. So it's converted to my time zone three hours behind UTC. Now I can use this date to get the start of the day and that will give the correct day on my location. So let's add the flow and I can create, for example, here a compose. Let me rename it to compose my start of day. In the inputs, I can just use that function again. Let's add a formula, start of day, and inside it, I go to dynamic content and pass the converted time from the convert time zone. 
let's click on ads and now this should give the start of my day let's test i always like to do and test to see the results and here we have the output of the start of day we have the day and the zero hours notice that we don't have the z in the end here Z stands for UTC time and this stands for zero hours on any time. I could use this already as the input of the filter in the get items. Let's see the filter just to remember what it is. Passing the created greater or equals that value. But here's the thing that I mentioned in the slides. If I just pass this to the share points without the Z, it will consider the time in the SharePoint settings. Here we can see better. With the Z, it means UTC time. Without the Z, it means the local time from the SharePoint. So if I just pass this one with 00, zero here, let me change to 00, zero just to make more sense. Right, now we have the correct dates following the example. If I just pass 00, zero with the Z, it will get the UTC midnight. If I pass the 00, zero without the Z, it will use the time based on the SharePoint configurations. If we want to pass like this, we need to make sure that in the SharePoint settings we have the correct time zone for our time zone. So if I go to SharePoint, here in the site, for example, I can click on site information and click on view all settings if I'm the owner of the site. And under regional settings, I need to configure the correct time zone. See that here is using Pacific time. For my example from Los Angeles, that's correct. But if I run here in Brazil, it's wrong. I need to set to my time zone that's Brasilia. The problem is that depending on where you work, you cannot change this configuration, or even you have people from multiple time zones, and that may be different. So the best thing to do, in my opinion, is just to use UTC to filter it. Pass with the Z with the correct UTC time. In our scenario, for example, continuing our understanding, we would get the start of the day in our time zone and then convert that hour in our time zone to the UTC time. So for example, in Los Angeles, at zero hours, if it's at zero hours that we want to get the tasks created after that time, we would need to pass in the filter at 7 a.m. UTC, passing the Z in the end. So if we filter like this, passing 7 a.m. UTC, it doesn't matter what's the configuration in the SharePoint site, it will always get the tasks created after zero hours in Los Angeles. So we need to do an extra step in our flow to get the time that represents hours, your hours, but in UTC. It's just one extra step that we need to do to ensure that it will work for any time zone. So let's go to our flow. And what we need to do now is convert this back to UTC. Now we have the start of our day. Let's get the start of our day in UTC. So I'm going to click on the plus and search again by Converse time zone. Here we have under date time. Now, the time that we want to convert is the output of the my start of day. The source time zone is my time zone, that in this case is Brasilia. Here it is. And the destination is UTC. And the format that I want to get is this one round trip date time pattern with the O in the end. Now let, let's rename this to UTC on my midnight. And this date is the one that we are going to pass in the get items. So let's go to get items. Instead of these outputs, inside the single quotes, let's get the converted time from the last action, that's the UTC on my midnight. I can remove the terminates. And right now, when I'm recording this, I didn't create any task yet. So I'm going to go to the app and add a new task, the app that we did in other module of the course. That's this one. I'm just going to add a new time entry here. 
you can just add directly in the list if you don't have the app, that's fine. So new entry, just select a projects, today's dates, worked hours, six hours, and let's give a description. Automation to send the weekly report, for example. Let's click on save. Now there is one task created today. I'm going to run the flow and it should work. I should get that task and receive on my email since I'm also an approver. Let's click on tests and see the results. So the flow run, got my current time on my time zone, got the beginning of my day and converted back to UTC. Since I'm three hours behind, I should get this result, the T and then three hours. So my midnight is UTC at 3 a.m. And this is what we are going to pass in the filter from the get items. Here I just passed, we can see the filter created greater or equals 3 a.m. from this day. So that's correct and that will always work. And these connectors will already treat the time adjustments for summer and winter. But got the items, extracted only the columns I wanted, converted to HTML, added a style in the CSS, run the child flow to get the approvers and sent the email. Let's see on my email if my task is in there. Should be. There is no reason not to be. Let's see. So there is a new task. That's the other flow that run when I created the task. And here is today's task summary. That task is right here in our summary. Now our flow is bulletproof against errors. We just need to remove this one because it's not useful anymore. Let's do that in the next lesson where I'm going to show you how to organize better the flow. We can use scopes to separate parts of the flow. See you in there. Do you want to watch the classes without any interruptions? By becoming a channel member or purchasing the course, you can watch ad-free and support the future of my content creation. Check out the link in the description and in the pinned comment to get started. See you in the next lesson.